Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here. Welcome back to part two of the Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin full playthrough walkthrough. In this part of the walkthrough, we're going to be going through Forest of the Fallen Giants. A warning now, this is going to be a long walkthrough. This is one of the biggest areas of the game. There's a lot to cover, several NPCs to meet, lots of little traps and trials and tribulations to go through. Okay, so I'll show you my character stats. Whoops. Currently level 14. I've only increased my adaptability to 10. That's all I've done. I've leveled up once since picking the knight starting class. Uh, if you've never joined me for these walkthroughs, this is a casual Let's Play style walkthrough. My job is to make this game more manageable for you and hopefully uh, make it so you have an easier time. Souls games are hard, there's no doubt about that, but it's all about overcoming uh, obstacles and circumstances, and as long as you keep a cool head, it shouldn't be too hard. All right, so Forest of the Fallen Giants, uh, one thing I want to say really quick. Um, you'll notice in video games, there's like a really um, common trope, and that is to go towards the light. There's a name for this. I think it's like visual indicators or like design language or something like that, um, where like your path is sort of laid out for you or at least indicated to where you should go. And uh, it's generally done with light or color. Okay, so we're going to run in here, and there is a chest here. Be sure to open this. There are no mimics in Dark Souls 2. However, some chests are booby-trapped, so you do want to be on the lookout for that. All right. So, we're going to pull this lever and open this door. However, if you die before reaching the next bonfire, you will have to pull this lever again, and again, and again, and again, every single time. Kind of annoying. Okay, wait for this door to methodically move. Alright, and then we come out here. Great, so you'll notice there's the treasure down there, and then there's a chest here, so let's drop down and... Alright, I didn't press circle there, so I don't know what the hell just happened. I swear to you, I didn't press circle. I literally, the game literally just rolled me off of a cliff. All right. I'm not editing that out. That was ridiculous. I hit the ledge and I guess I was holding forward. But I don't know why it rolled me off the cliff like that. Oh well. Now I'm hollow and green and disgusting. I'm hideous. I guess... It's a good time as ever to like tell you that as you die in Dark Souls 2, you will lose maximum health. It's kind of like Demon Souls in that when you're in uh, spirit form, you get a you suffer a health penalty, um, but it's not as bad and it's gradual, which is nice. Okay, so instead of trying to jump off this thing, I'm just gonna take the intended route and walk the plank. Great chest, grab the human effigy, and then we have to jump onto this little ledge here. Homeward bone and a soul of the lost undead. Okay, so there is an ogre right there. Uh, it doesn't drop any special items, so I'm actually going to attempt to run past it. But we have woken up an enemy here. So be sure to kill him. And then there is another one roaming right here. There will be enemies that sort of sneak up behind you in this area. It's because they're sleeping. Okay. So there's a bonfire here. Uh, believe it or not, I missed this bonfire until I got to New Game Plus. I had no idea this was here my first time through. It just doesn't seem obvious that there should be a bonfire there. Okay, so I will teach you how to kill this ogre. It doesn't drop any items or anything, or nothing like guaranteed, like the stone ring from that first ogre. So really nothing to get too excited about. But we're gonna hit it and get it onto land here. Much easier to fight these things on land. Yeah, we wanna try to get it into that loop where it does the one, two, God damn. And then drops. Wow, that was close. 
So you gotta be really careful with the ogres uh, because they do have a grab, and I described this in the first part of the walkthrough. Wow. Jesus Christ. Ogres do have a grab, and the animation can feel wrong. So, you gotta be careful. You may feel like you've gotten out of the way of the grab, but in reality, maybe you didn't. So that that, that can be tough to, to sort of accept and deal with. Also, when fighting these things, you'll become uh, painfully familiar with the difference of having uh, more invincibility frames in the previous Souls games. Um, yeah, it can be a little tough to, to deal with. Okay, cool, we got a Soul of a Proud Knight. I'm not going to rest at the bonfire, I didn't really lose much there. I used one life gem, they don't replenish anyway. We're going to keep moving. There's an archer over there, and then there's this guy with a shield. However, he swings pretty early, so it's not too hard to deal with. Let's kill this guy, and then the other one wakes up here. Alright, and then that should be it. Yeah. So you'll notice a corpse here. I'm going to try to get it once. It requires a really precise jump, and to be totally frank with you, it's not worth it. It's just a bunch of throwing knives. And I think a soul, so it's really nothing crazy. But don't forget this soul over here. And then we can proceed up here. And if you played the original version of Dark Souls 2, uh, this is where you're going to notice your first big difference. And it's this area here. So in the vanilla version of Dark Souls 2, uh, there was a Hyde Knight in this area resting against the tree. In Scholar of the First Sin, that is not the case. The Hyde Knight has gone. So I'm just going to wake all these guys up and kill them. They all die in two hits, so really nothing crazy. I took a hit, but no stagger damage. So it always feels weird when that happens. Ooh, okay. So we got a guy throwing firebombs. Be careful of him. What? Now he's still alive. got them all. Alright, let's loot the area really fast. Throwing knife. Again, be careful of that guy up there. He's the one throwing bombs. Broken straight sword. Probably gonna get a couple of these. Human effigy. Life gem. Throwing knife. Broken straight sword. Oh, hi. And a green blossom. So there's a ladder here, and as soon as you start climbing up it, an enemy comes down. I don't recommend trying to punch him off the ladder, just let him come down. I don't know what that was about. Okay, so we're going to go up the ladder, and we're going to try to jump on our way back. So this ladder leads us up to where that guy was throwing firebombs, now we can deal with it. First though, come up here, grab this soul, and then carefully Bump off this ledge. Over here. And then we're gonna jump this ledge. And then there's a corpse here. Short sword and the soul of a lost undead. And then if you like, you can actually drop here and get down a bit more easily. All right. So, the jump I was talking about before, hello. The jump that I was talking about before, I don't know where this guy came from. Maybe he's the one that fell off and he just came up to pay us a visit. I don't know. Anyway, the jump is right here. And this is a really, really bad jump. I'm just going to tell you that right now. I don't know if I'm going to make this. If not, oh well. Basically, we're just going to run and then try to like slide off the ledge a bit and then jump. But I don't know. I'm really not good at this one. I'm only going to try it once. Okay, well, we didn't die, so that's good. I'll try it one more time since we didn't die. I figured it was just either make it or don't.
Yep, dead. Okay, I'm not gonna try it again. It's really not a big deal. Again, it's throwing knives in a soul. It's nothing. It's a really, uh, really, um, really annoying jump. There's no sugar coating it. She's gonna... God, stupid backstab animation. That's the other thing about the backstabs in this game is sometimes you get caught in the animation when you don't want to be. It just depends on like where you were. Also getting hit by these arrows is just weird. Follow infantry helm. Like that. Right, so I'm just gonna get my souls back. I'm not gonna kill all these guys again. I do need to kill some of them. There is a torch there, you don't need to worry about it. Ow. Okay. Cool. Alright, so going through this fog, sort of go into a gnarled tree. And then you may be tempted to just sort of like run straight up. Don't do that. There are several enemies in this room. Instead, we're gonna sort of take the long way here. And you can kill this guy as he's jumping and then just sort of walk past the doorway and aggro these guys. Okay, there is a bookshelf here. Hold some wood bolts. Oh, forgot about that guy. All right. There's this guy here. He has a friend. All right. And then up this staircase will be a couple of enemies. So what you can do is you can tuck in here, sort of hide out for a second. Um, and then this guy has a bow. But then there's this guy up here. So this can be a little tough. Uh, basically, when we rush the guy with the bow, the one on the little branch here by my life bar is going to throw a firebomb. And then there's going to be another hollow infantryman just sort of chilling as well. Let's run up. Take care of this guy real fast. Just sort of walk elsewhere to avoid the firebomb that's coming. And then just keep an eye on this guy. Yep. Yeah, he can throw two firebombs really quick. I actually forgot to mention that. And there's an archer over there that will try to pepper you with arrows. Uh, so what we're going to do is there is a crystal lizard over here. Actually, no, sorry. It's just a treasure. Grab this, but be careful of the archer again. It's a buckler. So if you didn't start with the shield, there's your first shield. Then you can come up here. Okay. Very good. There is an enemy near this treasure, though, so get ready for it. Yep. Grab the treasure, and you get a witching urn. Okay, so the next destination is actually right here, but we're not going to go there just yet. Instead, we're going to open this door. We're going to get to the next bonfire, the Cardinal Tower. And what I want to tell you is if you ever have the time, go look up the gameplay reveal for Dark Souls 2 from IGN in, I think, 2011. And look at how this area looks compared to what it looks like now, and you will understand the disappointment of millions. Okay. Cool. So this is the hag merchant. Merchant hag Malentia. She sells a bunch of items. Broken straight sword, hand axe, club, castus. Uh, the Explorer set, 
And then she also sells some other stuff. So she sells Lenigrast's key. This is the key to the blacksmith's house. So if you'd like, uh, pick that up and then unlock the house and then go level up your weapon. She sells some human effigies. She sells a couple firebombs. She also sells Ferris Lockstones. She sells one of these things. We do want to purchase this. So make sure you have 4,000 souls, which we're just shy of. Um, make sure you have, make sure you buy this because it's actually gonna give us access to the earliest Titanite slab in the entire game. Uh, for now though, uh, buy a couple firebombs from her. And you're buying these for a really specific reason, which we'll get to in a little while. All right, cool. So once you're done with her, let's head upstairs and then we can actually do something kind of funny. So this door right here uh, normally requires the soldier's key, which you get from defeating the boss of Forest of Fallen Giants, which is the last giant. However, you can see that it's in severe disrepair, so you can actually just hit it and break it. Kind of funny. There is a crystal lizard here, so go ahead and kill this thing. We get a Titanite shard, two of them actually. Get the hand axe, radiant life gem, from over here. Get the hollow soldier helm. And then there's this door here. So we're not actually done with that first room, but anyway. Go ahead and open this chest. Oh, yep, I was wondering why the blood stain was there. I was like, wait, I think there's something in this room. Kill this guy. Get the small sign white soapstone, small white sign soapstone, radiant life gem. So let's cover that item really fast. So the small white sign soapstone be summoned as a shade to another world in order to help that world's master for a certain time. You, you will be rewarded for successfully assisting the other player. The effect is not as long lived as that of the white sign soapstone and it is used only in particular places. So I think you can only put this outside boss doors um, and you, it only lasts for a few minutes. So it's interesting, especially when you know that the full white sign soapstone is gotten in this area as well. Weird. All right, so this chest is kind of hard to see in here, but it's a small leather shield and some repair powder. And then I, th I do think that's it. Yeah, unfortunately, you would think that there would be like a torch or something to light in this room, but there isn't. This is one of those rooms where it's like, hey, it's really dark, I should have a torch. Then it's like, wait, no, we forgot about that mechanic. Strange. All right, so coming into this room here, uh, we want to drop and get this item here. So exactly where this hint is, which is very helpful, we're gonna drop onto this branch. And you get yourself a Divine Blessing. Okay, great. So go ahead and rest. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back out here. Careful though, you wanna make sure you kill this enemy so he doesn't sneak up behind you. That can happen. Hold on one second. So uh, we're going to drop down here and we're going to get into an area uh, with some late, I won't say late game enemies or anything like that. It's just, uh, it can be a tough area. Oh my god, that plunging attack used all my stamina. Okay, cool. So keep following this path and the reason we're doing it this way and not the other way is because that's what I prefer to do. But also you sort of get ambushed if they go the other way. Okay, grab your human effigy here, and you can drop here. We're actually gonna do those, we're gonna do another plunging attack onto that guy. Okay, great. Walk down here, and then there's gonna be a couple of sleeping enemies here, so you wanna be careful. 
So you get another five minutes on the torch timer. Hit him with the old one too. Same with this guy, and there's gonna be a third one right here. Usually he aggroes, so I'm just kinda surprised he didn't. Alright. We're gonna come through here. That's weird. That he didn't die. Okay. Oop! Alright, <laughs> thought there was actually a door here. Anyway, we have these like ninja turtle enemies here. And these guys are cool but a little annoying. So they have these big swinging attacks that you can pretty easily roll through. But if you get behind them, they can fall back on their shells. And it makes it so that you can't backstab them. The other thing that can be a little annoying about them is that their tracking is kind of out of control. So they can basically like spin, like it's almost like a record player. It's, it's, it's really nuts. You gotta be very, very careful when dealing with them. There's another one here. So I'm trying to... Okay, cool. We didn't actually aggro the infantry. Also, you gotta be careful because... Oh, boy. When they swing... Oh, I forgot about that one. Uh, when they swing, you can actually get kind of staggered uh, in place. Yeah, see how I'm like, moving real slow right now? It's because they stagger you with their hits. I also, I do like how, whoa, I don't know what the hell that was. It was really strange. Uh, I do actually like how, wow, they can kind of pause their attacks. I think that's actually really cool. Anyway, oh, you know what I never did? Never put my asses on the bar. Okay. Oops. All right, so let's come over here. There's, there's a cave here that I'll explain in, in a minute. Over here. Guy's walking around like he's trying to feed on some brains. And there's a treasure here. Cool, a few life gems. So the items on this side, uh, you cannot get until much later in the game, so don't worry about those. There is a cave here with a lizard that shoots fireballs. So he's in the distance there. If you have a bow and arrow, use it and kill this thing. Uh, otherwise... Don't bother. Okay, so there is a door. Yeah, you gotta be really careful. There is a door for us to open here. But you gotta be careful. So the idea is you wanna run and then begin opening the door once the animation starts from the lizard. So now, the reason for this is because it allows you to use the invincibility frames of that of the door opening to avoid the fireballs. And inside is the fire longsword. So there's just a longsword with the fire enchantment on it. And then once the lizard shoots three times, you want to run back out, but you want to hug the wall because, believe it or not, the lizard can shoot really far into this cave if it's doing it at the right angle. Just keep that in mind. Okay, well, we got everything we came for here. So we can go back up this ladder. And then this is gonna actually, ooh, what is that? Oh, it's this guy. Cool. So we're gonna uh, actually like drop back into this window here. And this is gonna bring us uh, to that area. With the archer and the bomb thrower. Does do more damage. I think this does more damage. Oh, I can't use it anyway. Well, can I two-hand it? No, I guess not. Oh well, not a big deal. So again, wait for the archer. Oh come on. I'm not going to deal with them this time. Very good. Okay, then we can come back through here. Perfect. So, really important is we now have 5,600 souls, and we can buy the Theros Lockstone from the merchant. Let's go ahead and do that. 
This is the first fragrant branch of yore you come across. It costs 12,000 souls. We do have an opportunity to get, I think, 15,000 souls from an enemy here. That said, I don't actually recommend spending it on this. Not yet. And then let's also buy a Lenegrass. It's key. Okay. Cool. So, there's a hint here. This probably says shortcut. Weakness, horse, then hurrah for horse. I don't get that. Anyway, this is a breakable wall. And we will break it in a little while. But that's why we needed to buy a couple firebombs from the merchant. So for now, come down this ladder. And then there's an enemy here that is asleep. But you absolutely want to wake him up and kill him. Okay, then we have a halberd knight here. Slice and dice there. And there's a treasure on this side along with another sleeping enemy. Soul lost undead. Great. So there's a door here that you cannot open yet. I do believe you need the soldier's key for that. And then down here, there are a bunch of those fire lizards that we were avoiding before. It is possible to jump down here and get a plunging attack on one of them. And if you do it basically at the right frame or the right time, it allows you to get here really early. Don't bother, though. It's really not worth it. Okay, so we're going to come through here. And then we're going to kill this guy. And then... Actually, what I want to do really quick is I want to... Eh, I'm not going to bother just yet. I'll do it later. So, again, I encourage you to go back and watch the gameplay reveal of this game. Because this door and this whole thing will be very different. It'll just look really good. <laughs> I'll tell you that. All right, moving on. Go through the fog wall. And now we're going to find Kale the Cartographer. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here, but then we're just going to drop off right here into this little house. Kill this guy. Grab this treasure. Nice torch. And then we're going to come down here. And then you got to be mindful of where you're moving because there's a couple of archers. There's one right here. But if you just get close to him, he'll take out his dagger, and then you can just fight him like normal. All right. Quickly climb the ladder to avoid the other archer. We're going to come over here. This guy has a shield. He can uh, block a good deal, if depending on your timing. Luckily, we're able to kill him real fast. Kill this guy. Perfect. There's another archer in the distance. So you got to be careful. What we're going to do next is we're going to jump over here. Wow, I just made that. Okay, and then we can drop down here. And then we're going to come to this cave. This cave is booby-trapped, though. Wait here. That's why. There's a boulder that will be rolling down that hill. So you get the human effigy, and then we can come up the hill. And then this is an NPC. Don't attack him. Don't do anything. Instead, you want to come over here and kill this guy. Get the amber herb. Wonderful. Then we can speak with this guy. You need to speak with Kale the Cartographer seven times in order to get him to leave. He's going to give you the key on the sixth chat, and then he's going to leave on the seventh. Or the seventh is the exhausted dialogue. Try tongue butthole. That's always funny. So just keep talking to him. And normally in these walkthroughs, I do just let people talk, and I sort of increase the dialogue audio, and you, you get to listen to it, but... A lot of the NPCs in this game, you have to talk to so many times in order to get them to do anything. Uh, once he says, I'll be back in Majula soon, and he starts repeating himself, that's the end of the dialogue. Kale the Cartographer is a really uh, good case study in the world building of Dark Souls 2. When you first speak with him, he doesn't know who he is. Or he sort of forgets why he's here or something like that. The second time, starts to jog his memory. The third time, it jogs his memory further fourth time he sort of understands why he's there and so on and so forth. He begins to remember as he speaks. In the world of Drang Lake, people are forgetting their purpose. And so if they sort of go too long without talking to anybody or like understanding themselves, they begin to go hollow. And that's sort of part of the hollowing process is forgetting why you're doing anything. Um, and so a lot of times when you speak to an NPC, they won't really know what, who they are. And it's an interesting way for the game to be like, okay, like you need to keep talking to people in order to find things out. I do think it's a neat little, uh, a neat way to do things. And I think it does lend itself to the world building. Uh, I just think it could have been a little bit cleaner, in my opinion. Okay. Cool. 
cool. So let's drop here again. And then this goes back to that fire room from, from before. All right, so let's climb up here. And then we're going to use those fire bombs that we found. Uh, but first, there's a little bit to do. So real quick, let me bring the fire bombs onto the bar. And then we'll use those in a second. All right, so we do have a Ninja Turtle. And these barrels are gunpowder. And for some reason, the Ninja Turtle hammers have fire properties. So what we can actually do is uh, kite this guy into the barrels and get him to swing. Sweet Jesus. Yep. See what I mean? Then you just gotta hit... Oh, come on, dude. Okay. So remember that those barrels explode. Very importante. If you have a fire weapon, don't swing at them. Your fire enchantment will cause them to explode. Okay, so I'm not taking this ladder just yet. That's a delivery choice. And this guy throws firebombs. You'll see in the distance here, where my helm is, there is a stack of uh, gunpowder barrels. That is blocking a wall. If you were to throw a firebomb at these barrels, the wall will explode. Oh my god. Oh no. So the wall is now open. I don't know how I did that just there, but sure. The wall will open and now we have really quick access to the bonfire. All right, very good. So here you go, back at the bonfire and now you have access to this area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna climb this ladder. When we do so, an enemy called the Pursuer is going to be dropped off by an eagle. At this moment, you only have one chance to kill the Pursuer here. The Pursuer uh, has appeared here since the vanilla version of Dark Souls 2. And then the Pursuer becomes a boss in a, a little later on. It's the second boss of Forest of the Fallen Giants. If you do not, if you die to the Pursuer here, or if you die while fighting the Pursuer here, he goes away forever. You still have to fight him as a boss, but he will never appear in this location again. Every time you kill the Pursuer, you get a piece of his armor. And you also get a ton of souls. It's not too hard to fight. The hitboxes are way better in Scholar of the First Sin than they were in the original version of the game. So we should be able to do this. What I want you to do, though, however, there he is, is I want you to come over here and kill this guy. And then go ahead and use a life gem. So the Pursuer gets dropped off, and then it's time to fight him. The Pursuer really is not that hard. He does have some big swings, and unfortunately your, your weapon is pretty weak, so you're just going to spend the majority of the time whittling down his health. That When his sword glows blue, he is going to curse you, so you want to be very careful. I do not recommend locking onto him. It's a bit of a waste. And you never want to go for more than one or two hits. Oh, the quick slash always gets me. I actually forgot about that. When you heal, he will fly towards you, so you gotta be careful. You don't want to be cursed. Actually, let me try locking onto him. I haven't tried that one time. Can't remember if that's a good idea or not. No, I don't think it is. Oh no. Oh, this really sucks. I'm using another life gem. Okay. Let's try this again. Dude, what? Maybe I should lock on. Maybe it'll get easier. Come on. This is really bad. Let me see something really quick. Let me see. <sighs> wow, that sucks. So what's funny and a little frustrating is um, I have done this before. I decided to restart this walkthrough because I didn't like how it was coming out. And 
in that first attempt, I killed the Pursuer. Oh, man, that's really frustrating. I'm sorry I wasn't able to show that to you. So here comes the Pursuer. Right there. There you go. He is a really, really tough enemy who we will actually fight as a boss in a little while. If you don't kill him here, it's really not a big deal at all. Um, but you sort of only get one opportunity to do so. Uh, if you don't kill him here, he goes away sort of forever. He will never show up in this spot again. This is way easier to do on later, oh God, on later new game cycles for obvious reasons. He's clearly very strong. So we're gonna do our best here. He is killable. Don't let anybody tell you he's not. Just gotta whittle him down. Don't hit him more than a couple times. You wanna be able to roll away. If we're able to do this, great, but this is gonna take like quite a while. Just be warned. God, this corpse is blocking me. That's crazy. That sword hit used to have, like, horrible tracking on it, and like, you used to be able to get hooked up by that thing so easily. But luckily, it's gotten a lot better. I don't want to get corpse blocked again, so I'm going to try to bring him over here. I have to itch my head so bad. Also, this this guy is like a prime example of why Dark Souls 2 feels weird. Like, I'm hitting him, but he is not reacting to the blows at all. And that, that doesn't feel good. Alright, I got the head itch out of the way. But yeah, it just, like, doesn't feel good to fight him. Or to, to fight most enemies in this game. It just, like, everything feels weird. It feels like you're you're sort of hitting mud, in a sense. And it just it's just strange. Like, that time we got some sort of reaction from him. All right. Nice! Managed to kill the Pursuer. We got the Ring of Blades, Solo Pursuer. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll splice it in, but my character stats will obviously be a little bit different. Uh, this is pretty bad. I wanted to try to get up here. Hopefully I can do it without dying. There is a quick way to kill the Pursuer, actually. Um, it involves jumping in a specific place. Ow. Ugh, that's really unfortunate. Alright, important thing here is an Estus Flask Shard, though. Ah, <sighs> what a bummer. It's okay. You, you fight the Pursuer quite a lot. Um, so it's really not a big deal. Poop this guy off. There you go. Get your repair powder. Okay, great. So you sort of get everything from here. Ow. And then I'm gonna run to the bonfire. And then what we're going to do... <laughs> this actually really sucks, because those souls are really, really <laughs> crucial, but it's fine. We're going to go back to Majula and level up our weapon, since we purchased Lenagrast's key from the merchant. Let's go ahead and give him the key. Oh, actually, you don't give it to him, you just use it. And there's a chest in here, which is really easily missed. Get a short bow. Be sure to speak with him. He thanks you. It's just thanks. And then... Rest. He will go into the house. And he will be 
begin smithing. And you, a man, not oh, okay. Cool. So let's reinforce. All right, cool. So now we have our sword up to plus two. I'll be around. All right. Uh, I I forgot to mention in the first part of the walkthrough, but you don't need to repair anything in Dark Souls 2 unless it fully breaks. Uh, every time you rest at a bonfire, your stuff is repaired. Unless it's fully broken. Anyway, the house key we got from Kale the Cartographer can now be used. And then we can come into the Majula Mansion. And grab the Ferris Lockstone here. It's funny. I guess I didn't need to buy it from the merchant. That's fine. Um, okay. And then we're going to come down here. And then Kale will not be here until we kill the skeletons in the basement. Okay. Cool. The other thing I wanted to mention is this chest right here. So this chest's contents will change depending on various factors. Uh, it'll pretty much always be a soul vessel first. Um, but sometimes there are events going on in the game. I don't think they happen anymore, but uh, that chest will basically reload and uh, the contents will change. Anyway, pick up another Estus Flask shard, and these skeletons can drop human effigies almost 100% of the time. It's a really common drop. Um, and then what we can do is reload the game, and then Kale will be here. I hope. I can't believe I died to the Pursuer. It's really frustrating. I think I actually will splice it in just so you know how it's done. I mean, you will have already known this, but. Anyway. Maybe I need to rest the bonfire. Maybe I need to light the torch down there. Either way, we still have a little bit to do here. Okay, so there is an upstairs to this mansion. And I am having a brain fart of how to actually get up there. Right here. The huffing and puffing in here is actually pigs, so it's nothing to worry about. Oh, I actually forgot to do something in the previous part of the walkthrough. Titanite shard and a torch, very helpful. And you can come over here. And then there's pigs down here. Yeah, so that's what all the huffing and puffing is about. I just want to make sure I didn't forget anything. No. Alright, so the thing that I forgot to do is hit the brick on this well. These pigs, man. These pigs are weird. Anyway, you get an SS Flash shard right there. So now we have three shards. And we can give those to the Maiden in green. I do want to check to see if I can level up my sword one more time. I think this is actually as high as I'm going to bring the sword. Oh my god, the pigs. They're gonna kill me. Oh, dude, these pigs are so annoying. It's obnoxious. And there's, like, nothing I can do either. Like, they drop aggro or they don't. And then, like, you can't rest at the bonfire if they're too close. Jesus Christ. Is that here to see, however? Great again. Okay. Great. All right, so 
Uh, let's go check on Kale. I'm not sure if I have to light the brazier down there or not, but we'll just double check. And he should 500% actually be there because he was repeating his dialogue, which means we exhausted it. Forgot this treasure too. It's funny, like at the start of the game, you only have 30 minutes on, or five minutes on a torch, but then by an hour into the game, you've got 30. Why hasn't Kale moved? Maybe you need to defeat the boss. I'm actually going to double check really quick. If you need to defeat the boss, okay, I understand. Let me just double check. Yeah, you, you gotta beat the boss. Okay, not a big deal. Okay, cool. Now that that's all done, let's go back to the forest and proceed. Man, I can't believe I didn't kill the pursuer. Shame. All right, go back to the Cardinal Tower. Great. And then we can go down here. So you gotta be careful, because there's a couple of these guys now. And again, you want to be avoiding the guy throwing the bombs. Alrighty. So, there's an NPC here named Pate. We will deal with him later. For now, we're going to go into this room. However, you want to be very careful because there are a number of ballistas in here. But what we're going to do is just run to the right. And they may reload, they may not. Ow. Oh my good lord in heaven. I hate the SSL system in this game. I hate how it just puts you into a dead stop. That's so frustrating. Alright. Very good. Cool. So you get the Great Soul Arrow. Large soul of a lost undead. Blue wooden shield. And those blisses kill a bunch of enemies in the distance, which is really helpful. Okay. Cool. So now let's go down here. And there's a chest right here. I'm almost positive this is a booby trap, though. Almost positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to equip a shield. Titanite shard, and then there's this hole right here. If you have a Ferris lock stone, you can insert it here. And then this wall gets a spooky face on it, and it basically says, Hey, I'm an illusory wall now. Great. Open this. I didn't even see what that was. One of these is a slab. And the Chloranthi ring. Perfect. So the Claranthi ring is really helpful. Increases your stamina regain. Uh, one really funny thing about Dark Souls 2 is if you notice, the buff is surrounding my character, but as I move, it trails behind. So it's literally like one stale static image trying to catch up to another. Really weird. All right, so this door is locked. It says, does not open from this side. If you listen closely, you can hear people on the other side. And so all you gotta do is knock on the door and then enemies will open it for you, which is cute and I think kind of hilarious. 
Life ring, large titanite shard. Like I said, life ring, kind of a useless starting gift. You don't even need it. You get it later. Okie doke. So that's it for this this area here. We can go back up. Okay, now it's time to pay a visit to Pate. Uh, Pate is sort of like this game's patches. Similar armor, similar weapon, uh, but different attitude. So he's not as dastardly as Patches, and you will actually run into a different NPC later on named Creighton. And Pate and Creighton have a uh, adversarial relationship. One is tricking the other. It's unclear who. Um, sometimes it's Creighton. Sometimes it's Pate. Uh, Pate. More interestingly, I find, is voiced by the actor Peter Serafinowicz, who you may know as a sommelier from John Wick 2. He's been in plenty of other movies, but that's probably his most recent American role that you might know him from. Uh, he said he was a really big Dark Souls fan, and after playing the first game, uh, he reached out to from software or Namco and was like, hey, I really want to be part of Dark Souls 2 in some way, somehow, and they made him the voice of Pate. So... A little bit of tribute for you. So I'm just going to keep talking to Pate, and eventually he will give us the White Sign Soapstone, which, like I said before, when we picked up the Small Stone, um, you know, is kind of pointless. Uh, he gives it to us after he leaves, though, so you do want to talk to him there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to equip uh, Firebomb and then uh, Witching Urns, and the reason for this is because when we go through here, the portcullis is going to uh, close behind us, and then enemies are going to swarm out of a doorway. So we want to do AOE damage to them. So they're going to swarm out of this doorway. And so what you want to do is you want to target this guy. Just like that. Do what you can in terms of AOE damage. Oh, come on, I rolled out of that. What you really want to do there is try to slow them down and clump them up so you have a fair chance. There. So once you're ready, keep moving. All right. Careful, because I do believe there's a ballista here as well. I'm almost positive it's at the top of the stairs. Maybe not. Aromatic ooze. Why do I feel like there's an illusory wall here? I'm going crazy. I believe there's another horde of enemies here. No? Oh, you press X on illusory walls in this game. <sighs> God. Another absolutely bizarre change in Dark Souls 2 is you don't strike illusory walls, you press X on them. Totally forgot about that. Anyway, chest here. Sorcerer's Staff and an Amber Herb. Definitely rate this. Very helpful. Then we come up here. All right. And then we fall back to Pate. Well, I hope that be careful. Oh. Then you get the white sign substance. 
with luck. Well, I hope that be careful. Okay, so that's the whole booby trap area. Very good. And then we can come through here. Alrighty. So we do have a couple of enemies up here. That we will deal with later. First, though, come over here. And then this guy wakes up. We can wake him up for him, though. The hollow soldier helm. And then you will see these guys attacking this tree. This is one of the coolest things, I think, in this whole series, is those guys attacking these trees. You find out why later on, so I won't talk about the lore reason, but there is a very specific reason that they are doing that. You can kill them if you want. I, I choose not to. Alright, it's coming up this ladder. We're now going to be able to deal with the enemies in those little archways. So you do get a light crossbow if you want to deal with them that way. It's your choice. Over here. Now I'm just paranoid for illusory walls. I'm gonna firebomb this guy out a window. Good. Just to make it easier, because there is another one down here. So let's make this jump here. Weird. Sold the nameless soldier and a torch. Oh god, that plunging attack did not work. Restore stamina. <gasps> oh god. Come on. Okay. It's been a while since I've gotten parried in this game. Mailbreaker and the infantry helm. And then don't forget about the guy that we dropped down here. He'll still be here. smarter. Alright. Cool. So that's this area. Then we can go this way. What I recommend doing is coming up here first, just to sort of get your bearings. Because there's a lot going on here. Alright, we can see two hollow infantry this way. Ugh. third one over here. But there's a fourth... There's a Ninja Turtle there. So I'm just going to swing to aggro. And then I'm actually going to heal up. Ow. Oh god. Got stuck on that pillar. Okay, very good. Excellent. Alright. Okay. Over here, grab the amber herb. And then this little area uh, is a booby trap. So it looks like you're just going to run, run, run until you get that treasure. But you actually want to turn around once you kind of get outside. Because you will have friends. So many friends. Alright. Now you can run up here, and I believe this is the halberd. Halberd and the Soul of the Nameless Soldier. The Halberd is a really good weapon. I've used it uh, for an entire playthrough. It's very strong. Okay. Cool. And now we have access to the boss. Some fire arrows, and then you can open this door, which acts as a shortcut back to the bonfire. 
But we don't need it. We can just go fight the boss. So the first boss of this area is the last giant. The last giant is a pretty easy boss. It's just an introduction. Um, basically just stay near its legs and you shouldn't have too much trouble. There's an enemy here. You cannot open this door. You need a, a key from way later on in the game. Sorry. Yeah, that adds more weight. Okay, very good. Uh, so, uh, you can summon Pate for this fight if you're human. If you want to go ahead and use a human effigy, you can do that. Um, you don't need to. It's a really, uh, really easy fight. Just stay near its legs. Uh, so every boss has this cutscene, and every single cutscene... I shouldn't say every boss has a cutscene, but every time a boss does have a cutscene, it does that weird red cloudy eye filter, and I don't get it. It's a weird design choice. Anyway, so the boss just sort of swings, but if you've upgraded your weapon, this really should not be hard at all. Oh god. LOL. Give my life gem back up. You want to stay behind, otherwise you can get caught in that big uh, arm sweep. You can also do a backhand if you're not careful. When you get to about 50% HP on the boss, the boss will break off its own arm and use it as a weapon. While this is happening, you can get plenty of free damage on the boss, because it takes him a while to come out of that animation. You do want to watch out, though, because now he has a, a weapon, and his stomps can be a bit more erratic now. And, of course, you can jump, because why not? But there you go. That's the last giant. So killing the last giant gives you a whole bunch of souls, as well as the soldier key. The soldier key can be used... Hello. The soldier key can be used to unlock a bunch of doors that were previously inaccessible. Okay. So... Normally, I would end a walkthrough at a boss, but because Forest of the Fallen Giants is so big, I'm not going to do that. The Soldier Key unlocks um, the next boss, which is the Pursuer, who, uh, you know, we sadly died to earlier. Um, but it also unlocks a door over here. And that's what we're going to go do now. But first, we want to light our torch at the bonfire. Uh, very important. What you also want to do is exhaust her dialogue. The reason you want to do this is because uh, she will move to Majula. So when she says it's high time, that's your cue that she's going to move. Alright, so. Uh, I'm not going to rest the bonfire. I don't really need to. But you want to light your torch. Again, you don't need to do this, but yeah, it's fun to be it's fun to join in in the world, in the RP. Alright. So first, we're going to open this door. With a soldier key. And then I want to discuss something here. So there's a chest. Open this now. The Ring of Restoration and the Torch. So the Ring of Restoration... Uh, gradually restores HP. It's a pretty helpful ring. It's a very slow tick, but still helpful. Alright. Cool. So now, over here, the Grand Lance. That's a new enemy for Scholar of the First Sin. I forgot about him. An Amber. Grand Lance. Is this a sword? To Lance. Okay. So, I'm not going to fight this thing, but this enemy is guarding a door. You cannot open this door until you have the King's Ring. And the King's Ring will automatically open that door if you have the ring equipped. You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, I am going to rest at the bonfire, because my weapon is almost broken. So, funny enough... Um... I don't know if this was ever fixed, but a lot of things in Souls games are tied to frame rate. And so when the game first came out, it ran at 
30-ish frames per second. LOL. Um, and weapons took a really long time to degrade. However, Skull of the First Sin runs at 60 frames per second, so weapons seem to degrade a little bit faster. Cool, so let's go ahead and light this torch. Or brazier. And then we can open this door using the soldier key now. Great. So here's what I want to show you. Clearly, a really dark passageway. Very, very dark. But you can see straight on through. So, not too crazy. In the original version of the game that was shown, that was way darker, and it was pitch black. So, you couldn't see anything. Uh, there are some Ninja Turtle enemies down here, so you do want to be careful. And then there are some skeletons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to light this one, and then we're going to start fighting. So this guy can throw things. Grab this treasure here. Black Firebomb, Homeward Bone. Cool. So let's let our torch then light this other one. And I'm dead serious. Go back and watch that original gameplay reveal. I swear to God, this area is black. Like, you, you cannot see anything without the torch. Okay, so there's a Ninja Turtle back here. Isn't there? Maybe that was only in that preview build. I could have sworn there was a Ninja Turtle. Ow. Okay. I'm pretty sure this door is a booby trap. I like know for a fact that there are Ninja Turtles here. Okay, so there's one there. We're gonna come up here first though. Oh God. Hit. Why couldn't you hit the barrel? Yeah, you knew there's gonna be somebody hiding there. So luckily he's almost dead. That's helpful. Okay. Somebody broke a door. Bad news bears. Actually, this is pretty good. Now. Alright, we're gonna just fight this one straight up. Killed all the turtles. Fun. There might still be one on the roof. <laughs> I feel like that guy just ran into the same problem I did. 
Human effigy. The whip. Bastard sword. It's cracked red eye orb, so we need the soldier. So that item is actually in the area with Kale the Cartographer. I forgot to get that. Armor Dennis. And a leather set. All right, so Armor or Dennis is an NPC invasion, so don't be alarmed. does have magic weapon, which can be terrifying. He has a decent amount of sorcery. Ooh, just stuffed him out of that one. So kind of a shame about that, because there's a bonfire there that I'm trying to get to. And, uh, yeah. Now yeah, we probably have to kill those turtles again. Luckily, though, everything's lit, so it's easier to see. I will say, like, when you light everything, the game does look really good. Like, which, again, just sort of makes the removal of, of the original lighting engine disappointing, because it does just look so good. Funny enough, you can just jump. And then the, the turtles can't really do much to you. Ah, nice. <laughs> Perfect. Alright, and then the bonfire is over here. Somewhere. Okay. Not a big deal. We, we can kill one turtle. Oh. Alright, I'm gonna vehemently disagree with that. So the reason we did this is for later, actually. There is a, a tree here uh, that we will need later, much later in the game. But it just makes it so we can just warp here like right away. All right. All right, let's go back to Majula and we will level up before fighting the pursuer. And that'll be the end of this walkthrough. Man, we've done everything so well except for 
dying the dying to the pursuer the first time. There is a uh, actually, I want to check something. For the halberd, what do I need? I need 20 strength, 14 dex. Less. Here, Kale the cartographer should have shown up now, since we've killed the last giant. Yep, there he is. So let's speak with Kale now. Oh, hello again. You've made it. The map, I presume. Of course. Take a good look. Even more flames have appeared. I don't know what causes it. Did you see the flame on the map? It wasn't there when I came here before. I don't know what explains it. But there is something greatly comforting about that flame. It seems to fulfill something very precious, deep within the soul. Something essential. I would not venture far into that hole. It was blocked by a wall, something built long ago. But it was crumbling, and I finished the job. Now a foul sound echoes within. Did you see the flame? Okay. So, on this map, this is basically a map of Drain Lake. It almost looks like a map of North America, kind of. Florida's over here. <laughs> um, anyway, so as you light various bonfires on the map, um, more flames will appear here. And then after you uh, get all of the flames, you want to talk to Kale a few times, along with having the Ashen Mist Heart, and you will get his armor set, along with a trophy. Okay. So that's it for, like, the Medulla changes. Now... Let's go back and fight the Pursuer, and then that'll basically be the end of this. Tower. You just want to check to make sure soldier's key. There's nothing else for us to unlock right now with the soldier key. Okay. Cool. Um, right. Let's go down the ladder. Kill this enemy. And then we're going to go this way. Come on, bro. Oh, wow. Uh... Okay, I'm going to redo this. <sighs> that was, like, bizarre. <laughs> and pretty lame. <laughs> oh, this is so good. This is, like, perfect. Yep, great. That was ridiculous. <laughs> that was so weird. <sighs> it really sucks. That's okay, though. I kind of wanted to change this anyway. I wanted to light my torch and uh, light the brazier down there. That was really, really strange. I'm more ups I'm not upset about dying, I'm more upset because dying in this game reduces your maximum health. And it's like not something I want to be dealing with right now. It's okay. Oh, 
Oh, I never noticed this here before. What is this? Hmm. Huh. Okay. I totally forgot about that. Alrighty. So. Yes, hello. souls. Oh, they're back here. Oh, of course. Alright, very good. There's only 300 souls. Alright. So now that we have the soldier key from the boss, we can now open this door. Alright. So I actually want to talk about this enemy here. And this one too. So you'll notice these enemies look different than everything you have fought before. They're wearing different armor, they have different weapons. They're smarter, they look different. It's for a really specific reason. And that is because these enemies are actually enemies that we will be fighting in a future area that Forest of the Fallen Giants connects to. So when I talk about context and enemies having better context in Dark Souls 2 than most games, that's what I mean. As you begin to get closer to a new area... Now, as you begin to get closer to a new area, enemies from that new area will begin to appear. So it sort of makes the world feel very connected because everything's sort of bleeding into each other. Okay, so what we have to do now is fight the Pursuer. You will notice there that there is a Ballista. There's actually a couple. We can use those if we'd like. That said, however, getting the Pursuer into the correct position to where the Ballistas will actually damage him can be quite difficult. We're going to be fighting the Pursuer on a pretty narrow walkway that also has cliffs to fall off of. So you got to be really careful. If you were able to successfully kill him, where I wasn't, this fight's going to be really easy for you. He literally does the same things. So, not much different here. Uh, just stay close to him, let him sort of swing around, and you'll be able to kill him. His hitboxes are a lot better than they used to be. There he is. Getting dropped off by the... And even if you killed him earlier, it doesn't matter. You will always have to fight him here. See, same deal. Literally doesn't really have any new attacks. Just does the same stuff as before. Ow. I am going to lock onto him. I feel like it's just better. I normally don't lock onto things that are bigger than me, but I feel like it's just worth it for the Pursuer. I would love to try to get him in front of a Ballista, but it's really hard. It's really hard to get him to just sit there. Maybe we can do it now. No. Eh. He can break them, so... Don't, like, rely on them too much. It's really not worth it. Now nah, I'm dead. Yeah, that's stupid. But like I said, his hitboxes are way better than they used to be, so it's really not much to worry about. Yeah, I should have locked onto him from the start of the other... the other area. I might be dead. You come to a dead stop when using Estus Flasks in Dark Souls 2, so healing becomes kind of annoying. Just different, but it's it, it's a it's a choice. Yeah, so locking onto him is the way to go. 
Sorry for misadvising you earlier. Ooh. Okay. I mean, sure, I guess. <laughs> Sword just got stuck. If you are able to use the Ballista, I mean, he'll drop really fast. But again, getting him to actually sit in front of the Ballista for long enough to actually do anything is is a challenge. And he always breaks him, so it doesn't really matter. A couple more hits, he'll go down. Ooh, got him staggered there. All right, well, that's the Pursuer. Really not that hard. Um, he was way harder in, um, in the original. But you do get the Ring of Blades, which is a nice ring. Uh, increases physical attack. So I'm going to take out this and use the Ring of Blades. All right, so this is where Dark Souls 2 starts to get a little interesting. So as you can see here, we have another one of these trees where the guys are sort of clanging against it. And then up here, we have a crow's nest or an eagle's nest. I just wanna make sure there's nothing behind here. This is where Dark Souls 2 begins to get a, li a little interesting. There are multiple ways to different areas of the game, including where we are about to go, um, which is the Lost Bastille. The Lost Bastille has one boss, but two different entrances. And depending on how you start the game, by either going through Forest of the Fallen Giants or Hyde's Tower of Flame, you will end up at a different end of the Lost Bastille. Going this way gives you an interaction with a really important NPC named Lucatiel of Mira. So, um, I do want to double check though that this is actually what we want to do, because I believe Lucatiel shows up somewhere else as well. So hang on, Lucatiel. Lucatiel of Mira. I'm just reading her entry, sorry. Um. So I guess technically her first appearance is um, later on. So maybe I want to end here, just come back. Her first appearance is actually somewhere else. In No Man's Wharf. So, because I want to preserve the Lucatiel of Mirror quest line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, just homeward bone back to Majula. Um, but you would want to rest, you want to examine this nest, and then you will get carried away to the Lost Bastille. Man, that's so backwards how they've done this. So the reason I'm pausing here is because of this NPC, Lucatiel. Lucatiel appears in No Man's Wharf, which is right after Hyde's Tower of Flame. And from No Man's Wharf, you go to the Lost Bastille. But you go to the other side. And then she also appears in Lost Bastille, but immediately after this. So I guess the game is... I don't know. I don't know what the game's trying to tell you to do, but I want to preserve this quest line as best I can, so I'm glad I checked. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to drop down here, and this is actually going to give us access to this item here. I think it's an armor set. The Drang Lake set. Right. Alrighty. Uh, we do have the Ninja Turtle there, though. So I don't think that so, 
Wow, he's gonna walk all the way over there to try to get to us. He walks like a weirdo. That's so funny, he's like bopping side to side, like a Simpsons character. Okay, uh, anyway, we're gonna go back to the bonfire. And then we're gonna go to Majula, we're gonna level up, and then we will end the walkthrough. I think we should probably be able to wield the halberd at this point. I think. We'll see. Oops. All right, let's go to Majula, level up. And then in the next part of the walkthrough, we're gonna go through Hyde's Tower of Flame, which is a much shorter area, really. Uh, it's really quite short, um, and that leads into No Man's Wharf, which is where Luca Teal of Mira is. There. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think I have any shards. Nope. What? Oh, Alrighty. I think I should be able to two-hand this thing now. Yeah, I think I could two-hand it. Although I really don't have enough stamina to do so, so I'll just stick with the sword for now. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna, what we will do next is in the next part of the walkthrough, we will go this way through Majula to go to Hyde's Tower of Flame. There are two bosses in Hyde's Tower of Flame. One of them is an old friend who, uh, I won't spoil it, but we will fight both. Um, the second one is guarded by a dragon, which is a little annoying, but I think our weapon is upgraded enough to fight it. Um, so the first boss is trivial. Um, I'm actually going to show you the quick way to kill it, just because it's actually kind of funny. Um, but basically, you can either go for the quick kill, but make the arena more treacherous, or you can just make the arena really safe and go for the long kill. But it's really up to you. I'm going to go for the quick kill just because it's so funny. Um, and then uh, we're also going to get a key... We're, we're, we're going to cover Hyde's Tower of Flame next. I'll leave it at that. There's two bosses in that one as well. That's going to do it for Forest of the Fallen Giants. We basically cleared out the entire thing. We will absolutely revisit it much later on in the game once we get the uh, the Ashen Mist Heart, I think it's called, from the, from the dragon. Um, and then we'll do some really cool stuff uh, with those trees that the enemies were banging on. But for now, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Dark Souls 2, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch, and as always, I'll speak Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.